Hello everybody. Happy Juneteenth. The next camera is the Nikormat EL. I don't know if it's Nikormat or Nikormat. It has two Ks. It's one of those words that I've read and never heard. It was made from 1972 to 1976. Nikormat was Nikon's second attempt at a different branded uh, kind of consumer level camera. They did uh, Nikorix starting, I think, in the late 50s. Um, but it was not real successful. Probably their highest spec uh, SLR under that brand was actually made by Mamiya. This model, the EL, was Nippon Kogaku's uh, first focal plane automatic exposure camera. They did have a... Uh, Nikon Auto 35. It was an SLR, had a fixed lens, looked more like a rangefinder. Um, that was in 1964. It had a lens shutter and it was shutter priority. But for the modern SLRs, uh, this was the first one. It's metered manual or aperture priority. When it's in aperture priority, set to the green A right here, and it also has a lock. You have to push the little button there to move it back off of automatic. It has a stepless shutter. The shutter itself is a vertically traveling uh, metal shutter. goes from 1 1,000th of a second to 4 seconds plus bulb. I read someplace that the space here between 4 seconds and bulb is actually spin the guy around there eight seconds but I guess it wasn't reliable enough so they backed it back off to four seconds this does require a battery and give me a sec here it uses a six volt uh, 4 SR44 or the PX28 and you use the mirror lockup and then slide this little tab to the left if you're looking into it, and it pops up. And the mirror chamber, the battery chamber, is at the bottom of the mirror box. Kind of a clever place to put it. A little bit of a pain to get to it, but not too bad. So the shutter's closed, so if it went dead while you were using it, you could swap it without ruining the film. You just got to always remember to take it off of the mirror lockup. It does uh, use the pre-AI uh, lens mount, requires the little rabbit ears here. And to do that, move this uh, sensor all the way as you're looking into it clockwise. Set your lens at f5.6, and then it'll mate up. And then you bring it over. And then to tell the camera um, what the lens can do, you have to swing it over to your smallest aperture, your largest F number, and then you swing it all the way over to the lens's widest aperture, the smallest F number, and then it's indexed to the body, and the body knows what to do with it. Um, because it's metered and has aperture priority, you do want to actually set your film speed. It's not just a reminder. You push in on this little uh, tab here, and then you can change your speed. It's a little bit of a pain, but you're also not accidentally going to monkey with your film speed. The meter is a match needle system. Um, over on the left side, the photographer's left side of the viewfinder. In manual, the black gives you the camera body's recommended shutter speed, and then the green, kind of translucent needle, tells you uh, how you're actually set. So you basically chase the black needle with the green needle by changing uh, your shutter speed. It'll also uh, you can chase it down by changing the aperture. And when you're in aperture priority, the black uh, tells you what shutter speed is set by the camera body, 
and the green one just stays up at the top in the A to let you know that you're in automatic aperture priority mode. It's a cadmium sulfide uh, meter, uh, so it's a little bit slow to recover if you've had really, really bright light in it. It's 6040 center weighted, and the viewfinder has an extra circle around the uh, micro prism and the split image that shows you, uh, it's a 12 millimeter diameter area, shows you where it's going to give the 60% weighting uh, in your field of view. With a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens at ISO 100, this body can meter from EV1 to EV18. So for an older camera, it's got a pretty good metering range. The ISO is selectable um, from 25 to 1600. It has a self timer here that's good for about 10 seconds. And then if you push it in towards the lens, it's an auto exposure lock. Now the auto exposure lock is not locking, so if you get up close to meter and lock it, you got to hold this thing in towards the lens until you hit the shutter button. There's not an on-off switch. This standoff position of the winder um, enables the meter and it also um, enables the shutter button. With it closed, the shutter button will not, uh, will not press down. So even if it's wound, you put it in, your shutter's locked. That's good because that way you're not taking a picture of the inside of your camera case or something. Um, X-Sync is marked in red. It's at 1 125th of a second. And an interesting thing about this camera, if you lift the shutter button, it be hard to see, there's a little red lightning bolt. That tells you you're set for an electronic flash. And if you lift it and move it over, there's a little white bulb here. So this guy could also do flash bulbs. And because they have a long burn duration, um, it'll sink at any speed using a flash bulb. In addition to the hot shoe, it's an older one, it has a standard connector, not an intelligent shoe. There's a PC cord socket here on the left side and it'll accept a standard cord and then it's also threaded. Uh, Nikon did a series of uh, threaded flash connectors. This button here on the opposite side from the lens release button uh, is your depth of field preview. So it dims it down and then blurs out the background, you know, depending on how you have it set. That's a nice feature. Um, you know, if you're really going for a shallow depth of field, you need to make sure you've got your focus nailed. On the back, there is a battery test button because it does require batteries. You push this in and it's got this collar around it so you kind of have to use your fingernail or a coin and it lights up this amber light. That's broken on this one, even though the meter is working, uh, the battery check light or lamp is burned out. It does use kind of a standard way of opening the back. You pull up on the rewind, but it also has an extra lock here. So you have to swing this piece over and then it'll lift up all of the way. And it's pretty easy to load. Pop your film in the left hand chamber and then it's got uh, what they pretty much standardized on later. It's got multiple slots in the take-up spool and you can see the direction. It's winding this way so it winds the film emulsion out on the take-up spool. I really enjoyed using this camera um, for a consumer level camera. It's pretty full featured. Luckily this one's in pretty good shape. I uh, jumped this one to the head of the line because I borrowed a few lenses from a friend and he lent me this 35 millimeter f1.4 lens that still has the rabbit ears so it's compatible with his body even though this lens uh, is also compatible with an AI 
body. So I wanted to uh, use this. Took it on a couple of different trips. We were on the Continental Divide Trail along the San Luis Mesa. It's in the Rio Puerco Valley, kind of in between San Ysidro and Cuba, New Mexico. So the first trip, I took some expired uh, black and white T-Max and I was bracketing but it was really old and lost a lot of speed so being the genius that I am sometimes on the second trip I used uh, this also expired roll of Agfa film that was made for Walgreens except for a little color correction I got pretty darn good results so even though I bought them at the same time from our local Goodwill for about a buck a piece, um, the color film survived in much better shape. So I'm going to get on to some other cameras that fit the other lenses. Uh, I got a uh, an M42 lens and then a Pentax K mount. So I'll figure out what bodies to shoot those on, and I'll see you then.